Okay, I already have a spoiler-free review of Dawn Shard. If you're looking for that, I'll link it in the description. But where I stand is you don't need to read this. So I made a list of everything important that happened in Dawn Shard. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll be up to speed in everything Cosmere. If you have already read Dawn Shard, let me know your favorite moments or if I missed anything in the comments. This is going to be full-on spoilers. I think it's important to note most of this book, nothing happens, but then everything is revealed during the last 10%, which is the Sander Lanch, if you will. For the rest of the book, pretty much all characters are static. So the basics, if you haven't seen my spoiler-free review, Risen's pet dragon, Chiri Chiri, is kind of sick. They decide that if they take her to this mythical island, she can be cured. Navani Colin is like, this island is kind of sus. There might be an Oathgate here. I'll send a couple of Radiants, but no one really important. So they send Rock's daughter, Cord, Lopen, and his cousin Huyo. Both nice Radiants without shard blades. Risen was given a ship by her mentor Visteem, but the ship crew doesn't really trust her. They don't really care about her authority. They already have a captain, so she is not taking the role of a captain, but it's a separate role as the ship's owner. So let's begin. Number one, Lopan has a shard blade. That's right, we're going all in at the end of this book. Lopan finally gets a shard blade, or I guess I should say spren blade. He levels up as a radiant. He was supposed to realize that sometimes he makes jokes at the expense of others and it hurts people. So once he realizes that he gets his blade, it's kind of a cute moment, but Huyo gets his blade before Lopen while trying to protect Lopen. Apparently he kind of resented Lopen and he had to accept that he would protect even the people he hated. It's the standard oath, but both have shard blades now, so don't be shocked in Rhythm of War. Number two, Cord has a shard plate. Kord is Rock's daughter. Once they get to the island, they find a secret cave and there's a plate there. Kord takes it. She has a plate now. She wants to go back and protect her homeland. She wants to learn how to fight in it. You might say nobody wants to go to Horn Eater Peaks, but that brings us to number three. Horn Eater Peaks have a perpendicularity. I think they mentioned it in Oathbringer anyway, but there's a perpendicularity there, so you can travel to Shadesmar. This is nothing new, but the implications are kind of new. Court says the Alethi will come there saying they want to protect them, but in reality, their lands will be practically invaded, so she wants to be able to protect it themselves. Number four, Chiri Chiri is gonna be a giant crab dragon. I guess it was implied before too, Chiri Chiri is clearly the dragon equivalent in Roshar. Once she gets to the island, she bonds a particular type of Luxpren. Every few years, she would need to go there to bond Luxpren again, and she will get bigger and bigger, and at some point, we'll see a Risen riding a giant dragon or something, I don't know. Number five, there indeed is an oath gate on this island. The island is called Akina. There is a more important secret that I'll get to in a minute, but there also is an oath gate here. It's super well hidden, but our team of explorers find it. So that's the thing, although it doesn't really matter except for Chiri Chiri, I guess. It'll be easier for her to get here. Number six, Risen's crew finally respects her. It's not really a gradual thing. At the end, she makes a serious deal with the protectors of the island and saves everyone's life. So then they're like, wow, you could have just made a deal for yourself, but you pushed it and saved everyone. You're legit. So in the future, we might see Risen and her ship and its crew. Number seven, Hordlings. There's a creature that is composed of little Kremlings that can form into complex life forms and imitate them. This is a new Stormlight monster compendium entry. They can imitate people. One of them, or I don't know if I should say one, I don't know, one of them pretends to be human and he sort of fools everyone and becomes Risen's aide. At some point they realize that he has been trying to keep them from getting to the island. Eventually he and his kind try to kill everyone so that they can't reveal the island's secret. But Risen convinces them to instead they will keep the secret because otherwise people will keep coming looking for it. And with that, secret of the island, number eight, Dawn Shard. So after the assistant guy goes psycho and attacks everyone, Risen and Cord hide in a cave, and in the cave there's a mural. And the Risen looks at it and kind of something happens, kind of something, something like a command. It happens. So then now she has the thing, Dawn Shard. 
What is the thing? Well, it's a power that is super important in the Cosmere. Some people are looking for it. It's like Infinity Stones. Not everyone can use it. Risen can't use it, but they don't want powerful people to have it. So because Risen looked at the thing, it is now inside her. So she will keep it. Chiri Chiri species were apparently guardians for this thing. So she will guard Risen instead. Risen will teach Kremlings how to imitate humans better as part of the deal. And basically, that's it. Risen now has one of the most power thingies in the Cosmere, but we don't really know what it does. Don't be surprised if you see weird guys around Risen. They're probably Kremlin people. It seems like a lot of stuff, but as I said, most of these happen at the very end during the Sanderlanch. So I found most of the book pretty boring. Obviously the these words are accepted moments are always moving. I like those moments. Everyone does. Those are the core of the Stormlight books. It's all about improving yourself compared to your own self. Like you're not comparing yourself to others. So everyone's journey is unique to themselves. And those moments always work for me. But yeah, these were the eight incredibly important plot developments in Dawn Shard. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like to let me know. If I missed anything important, leave a comment so we can have a more complete list. And if you'd like to see more numbered lists, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later.